So this vlog is about putting into a video format the things I'm looking forward to doing when I get to Denmark. And the interesting thing is that it's the wishes that I make right now. Um, if I don't, if I don't record it, I'll probably forget it because what you anticipate as being your goals to to do when you visit uh, a region seem to shift and change when you're actually in that region. So I'm going to list out uh, a bunch of different things that I want to, or what I'm looking forward to do when I go to Denmark. Okay, first thing I'm really been looking forward to is going to a chaos communication camp or the conference and I think they normally have them in Hamburg and the camp I don't know where they have it but it's some airfield that it occurs and it's like a five-day event and I got, I got introduced to chaos communication camp um, at a bar camp I learned about it at a bar camp Tokyo bar camp um, I think it was in 2008 and uh, what I see is the chaos communication camp or the conference is the predecessor to uh, Maker Fair, and so it's the probably the original. And since I'll be in that area, I definitely want to check it out. Um, and there are people in that conference that I saw at the bar camp, like Bicycle Mark, and I'd like to reunite with him. Maybe. I hope to see him at one of those camps, or maybe I'll go down to um, to the Netherlands, to Amsterdam, to actually see him there. So that's uh, the other thing. Oh, there's so many. I've got so many friends in in Europe, and I've never had a chance to be in Europe to visit so many of these friends. One of the one of the friends I have, it's actually my best friend, and he lives in uh, Sweden. And uh, he's my best friend from high school. And I haven't seen him since uh, 1992. So we're talking about 20 plus years I haven't seen him. And we would always go hiking. And so I'm really looking forward to reuniting with him on a hike, probably in Sweden or somewhere. And in the hikes that we did, th these were hikes that we did in India. And we'd always recreate uh, uh, scenes of uh, Lord of the Rings. and. Um, I would always hear stories of how there are groups in Europe that would recreate that type of environment. Now I don't know if I'll, I'll do that, but I think I can envision doing hiking in Sweden where we get to replay a bit of our past and I'm looking forward to that. Earlier in the year I saw a video about forest kindergartens and they seem to be quite popular in uh, Denmark and I want to see if I can actually go and visit uh, a forest kindergarten. It just seems like, well, let me put it this way. Um, there was a PD that I did long ago and in that PD there was all these pictures that were put on the floor and we were instructed to go around and look at the pictures and pick out which ones we liked. And so I went around and I saw a um, picture of people hiking in the mountains and seeing different areas of the wilderness. And then we were supposed to bring those pictures back and then say, what do we envision uh, a school to be like? And I envisioned, uh, see the irony is I'm a, a tech director and in the tech director world, we're stuck in our offices and we're using technology and we're in buildings and I thought it would be nice if you had such a school where you could be outside and you could still use the technology but you're not restricted to being inside a building and when I saw those pictures I said how could you have school be outside and I look at a forest kindergarten and that's what that is so I'm curious to see a forest kindergarten in the flesh and then, you know, wonder about how we could redefine school based on that idea. Right about when I accepted the position 
to be working at uh, Copenhagen International School, I learned about another group. Um, it's called the Flow Factory. And they broke ground to build this building. Um, and it looks like it's a combination of, uh, you know, it's got design thinking, it's maker space, uh, problem solving, innovation. It's, it looks like it's an integration of student learning, uh, but also it looks like it's an integration with student learning and adults. Uh, it's, as far as I know, it's not a school, maybe an institute, I don't know, but it looks really interesting. And I'm, my understanding is they're opening it up in August and I want to go visit that. Um, and part of Flow Factory is uh, another person on Twitter I've met, his name's Jacob, and I want to meet him and I want to see what this is all about. I, it looks really exciting. It's all in the, in, the, in the genre stuff that I like. And I just want to learn about it and see how I can be part of that community. Um, it's, there's so many unknowns at this point, so it's hard for me to say anything about it, but I'm really looking forward to visit that. I'm absolutely a train nerd, or maybe I'm a transportation nerd because I like taking pictures of planes, traveling on different planes, but I really like uh, trains. And when I was in Japan, I absolutely loved taking all the different types of trains that were available and they had such a diversity. And in China, I, I do the same thing. I try to at least document and record some of the different train systems that are out there. I'm curious about Denmark, what trains and trams they have in circulation but i'm also curious about the other parts of europe uh, i understand that switzerland has a diverse train network i'm i'm really interested in taking the different mountain trains and the trams and discovering other parts of europe i'm guessing there are other places in europe that have unique tram train systems i know helsinki does so it's it's uh, learning about those systems and probably trying to find the ones that no one's heard of about. Those are the ones that are really interesting. My guess is there's quite a lot already been discovered. So finding those ones that haven't been found, is going to be really, really hard to find. But even if that's not the case, um, I'm going to enjoy uh, that journey. One big thing I've been looking forward to is uh, the hiking and the walking that's available in Scandinavia, in the Nordic countries, and in Europe. Um, I can do walking here in China, but it's mostly city walking. And we have a mountain, we're lucky here to have a mountain in Nanjing, and, but you can only hike it so many times before you start to get kind of bored with it. Um, in Japan, I had the luxury of there's so many different mountains right behind Tokyo and I could take a train line and and hit the the trails within the, in an hour. Uh, so I'm curious about the hiking of opportunities in Denmark. I understand it's flat so I guess it's gonna be a different style of walking um, but you know there's a train that just goes right into Sweden and I'm curious can I just you know take a train get in to Sweden and hit some trails very easily. Um, I know for the longer weekends, I'll probably do uh, the Norway. I'm very curious about the, they have hiking huts or they have huts and you can do a hike. Maybe, I, I guess you can do one week and you get a key for these huts and you, can, you don't have to carry a lot on you because the, the huts have what you need. So you're just carrying really a very small backpack and you can go from one hut to another. So it's feasible to do a one week hike and I'm looking forward to those because if I can do a one week hike I can lose a tremendous amount of weight and that's that's the best way for me to lose weight um, and then there's also I want to go down to Switzerland I want to explore the the walking trails that they have that go between the towns and also they've got a fantastic hiking um, hut system that that is <laughs> that is the biggest thing I'm looking forward to bar none I, I think We'll see what happens when I'm actually working there. Um, 
will I have the discipline to take the time off to do that, those kind of things? Because those things take a, a certain amount of discipline. You can get busy with life and forget those things. Well, we'll see when, I, when I'm there. Do I do a vlog showing me doing, the, doing these things? <laughs>